Let's go have a great day at Magic Kingdom using the brand new multi-pass system as a non-resort guest. Hello there, ma'am fam. We are in Walt Disney World's OG Park to finish out this multi-pass series. And just like in the previous parks, I have made a list of everything I'd like to accomplish in Magic Kingdom today, and I'll be doing it in whatever means necessary. Light, multi-pass, fancy rides, virtual queues, standby. Some of these things don't even have lightning lanes. Basically just using the system throughout the day like an average guest to show you the best way to do it. You know throughout the day I'll be providing my best tips and tricks on how to use the new system in Magic Kingdom, the most popular park in Walt Disney World. And again, I'm a non-resort guest, which means I did not have quite as much of an advantage as a resort guest today, so we're going to show you how that functions as well. I think it's going to be a great day. Let's get to it. Before we get to our first lightning lane, let's do that classic multi-pass single pass 101. This is just a quick overview of the system. The full breakdown I already did in our first multi-pass video, as well as a very long video from the perspective of a resort guest, so make sure you check those out as well. As always, let's kick things off with our multi-pass and single pass 101. Multi-pass is the system that a few months ago at this point replaced Genie Plus. This is a paid skip the line service that allows you to reserve times at select attractions across all four parks so that you may access the expedited queue. The price is a per person cost to book as many attractions as you'd like throughout the day, and that price varies based on the time of year and day of the week. Magic Kingdom is the most expensive of the four parks to purchase the set, and on a not very busy weekday in August, it was $25 for me to purchase today. Additionally, I should note that you can only reserve one time at each attraction. You cannot repeat attractions with the system. Single pass, aka what I call fancy rides, are the attractions that are so popular across the four parks that they are not included with multi-pass. To skip the line there, you will need to purchase individual access per person per ride. This is the only park that currently has two single pass attractions, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which was $11 for me today, and Tron Light Cycle Run, which was $20 for me today. Single rides are what I previously called fancy rides and what I continue to call fancy rides because they function basically the same way as they did before. And as a friendly reminder, that expedited queue at both multi-pass attractions and fancy rides is called the Lightning Lane. The Lightning Lane is the physical queue that you will enter when you are using both of these systems. So when people say they're reserving their next Lightning Lane, they're booking their next Lightning Lane, or they're booking their next multi-pass, it's synonymous, but Lightning Lane is the physical place at the attractions. I find that the terminology gets confusing because it is. Now, the biggest difference between the previous systems and this one is the fact that you can reserve them in advance. For both multi-pass and fancy rides, Walt Disney World Resort guests get a huge perk of being able to book seven days in advance of their check-in for their entire stay. Non-Walt Disney World Resort guests can only book three days in advance of the day they'd like to come. Certain date-based tickets will allow you to book for your entire day, but many tickets, like my annual pass, you have to book three days in advance of each day you want to come, and therefore, as you can imagine, resort guests are at quite an advantage. I've already done a full video on the perspective of a resort guest, so you can check that out if you're going to be one, but just know that past the initial selections, once I'm in the park today and using the system, everybody's on a level playing field, so this video should be helpful to all. So let's take it back to 7 a.m. Eastern, which is the time the booking window opens, three days ago when I was able to book for Magic Kingdom. Now, I was not surprised to find that one attraction in particular completely unavailable as a non-resort guest. You guessed it, Tiana's Bayou Adventure, not available. Also not available, Jungle Cruise, but that's because it's under refurbishment, not because it's sold out. As far as everything else goes, there was plenty of availability with both morning times and evening times for the fancy rides, again, Tron and Seven Doors Mine Train, as well as the popular attractions. Now, another big difference of the system from Genie Plus is that your multi-pass attractions are now in tiers. The more popular attractions on multi-pass are considered tier one, and the other attractions are considered tier two. When you're initially doing your booking, you can book three at a time, one from tier one and two from tier two, or all three from tier two. Considering Tiana's Bayou Adventure was unavailable as my tier one attraction, I picked Peter Pan's Flight, which I think is probably the second most popular of the tier ones, and I picked what I think are probably the most popular of the tier twos, Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. Again, I was very pleasantly surprised that there were plenty of morning times available for all of them. I expected that I wouldn't be able to book until the afternoon, but hey, I was able to book all three of those pretty quickly, as well as move around some times for both of those fancy rides. I will say Seven Doors Mine Train had the least availability of anything I was able to book, with the earliest times being the mid-afternoon. Now, I highly recommend booking this relatively quickly. You only have five minutes on this initial screen to make your selections and check out. So don't do a ton of modifying here. Select what you'd like. Modify if you can quickly, but go ahead and lock in those attractions, and then you can always modify after. Another big change of the system is that you can not only modify your multi-pass lighting lanes now, but you can also modify those fancy rides. 
They are of course subject to availability, but you could move things around leading up to your trip, even up until walking into the park that day. I did check a few times to see if Tiana's Bayou Adventure ever came available. I never saw it, but still I'm walking in today with this lovely stack of five attractions ready to go. We're gonna put a pin in Tiana's Bayou Adventure for now, and I think that's enough yapping, so let's get to our first attraction. Our first stop today is Peter Pan's Flight. Again, this is a tier one attraction. And initially when I booked it, it was a little bit later in the day, but I was able to modify it to a mid-morning time by checking back the days leading up to my visit. Peter Pan's Flight, an incredibly popular attraction, always has been, and it recently reopened after being down for refurbishment. So I'm excited to see any changes that they've made. Peter Pan's Flight is a classic family dark ride where you're gonna jump aboard a pirate ship and sail off to Neverland with Peter Pan and the Darlings. Thank you. <laughs> All right, tapped in my first touch point at Peter Pan's Flight. They usually have the second one on, I always like to ask, and they do. Hello. Thank you. And now that I have tapped into Peter Pan's Flight, I can go ahead and book my next attraction. Peter Pan's Flight check. Lovely, nostalgic, quintessential Magic Kingdom attraction. And it looks great. They zhuzhed it, they brightened it, they added some new colors. And the biggest change though, like the actual change you can see, is they changed the scene with Tiger Lily. They removed the What Makes the Red Man Red song, which is probably about time. And they changed how that scene looks, but otherwise it just looks bright and refreshed and lovely. Now, as with the other videos of this series, I'm also tracking how long the posted wait time is compared to how long I wait in the landing lane so you can see how much time I saved. It's not super busy today. The wait was only 40 minutes posted, which is really not that long for this attraction. It's normally 60 or longer, but still with landing lane, I only waited two minutes to board the attraction. Now, after tapping in a Peter Pan slide, that does unlock the ability to make another lightning lane on multipass. Remember, you can always have three, so as soon as you tap into one, you can go ahead and book your fourth. When you tap into two, you can book five, and so on and so forth, which is why, as a pro tip, it's smart to have one pretty early on and whenever you intend to visit the park so that you can start booking new ones. I am not a rope dropper. I got to the park around 10.30 this morning and made Peter Pan's flight to be right in that mid-morning window so I could keep maximizing my use of the system all day long. And remember tapping into that first multi-pass lightning lane unlocks not only the ability to book another one, but it unlocks the ability to park hop. If you have a park hopper capabilities on your ticket, once you tap into your first attraction, the next lighting lane you book can be in another park. It also unlocks the ability to modify any other lightning lanes that you had already booked in this park to other tier one attractions. Remember, you could only book one tier one to begin with. No matter what attraction you tap into, first tier one or tier two, once you've tapped in there, you can modify, subject to availability, the other attractions you've already booked in that park, if you wish, to more tier one attractions. And it unlocks the ability to book other tier ones at the other parks when you're booking that park hopping. So tapping into your first attraction is very important because it kind of unlocks the freedom of the system for the rest of the day. So after I tapped in at Peter Pan's flight, I only had a couple minutes to make a decision. Again, it was moving very quickly in the lightning lane, but I went to the tip board to see what was available. There was plenty of availability starting around one o'clock over at Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. That's another tier one attraction. Buzz Light, your Space Ranger spin at a 25 minute wait. There was availability in about 30 minutes. Haunted Mansion has a 25 minute wait, but I already have that booked. Again, I can't book it again, but it still had availability starting around 2.30 today. Pirates of the Caribbean had availability. Space Mountain, another tier one attraction. 25 minute wait had availability for relatively soon. So again, not a super, super busy day today, which worked out well in my favor, but plenty of availability for the rest of the park. I went ahead and booked a one o'clock-ish time over at Big Thunder Round Railroad. That's not quite as soon as I might be able to ride it, but I might try and modify it to sooner, but locked in another tier one. And now I'm headed over to Adventureland. 
made it into Adventureland. Well, I saw the Adventure Friends Cavalcade, which allowed me to check off a wave at a princess on my list. There's several princesses in that cavalcade, including my favorite Mulan, but you also had Pocahontas, Raya, Merida, Elena, Moana. If they're showing that while you're here, I highly recommend it. You can see the times in the app, but there's so many fun characters in it. It's real cute, just a little two float moment, but you've got characters from Zootopia and Three Caballeros and Bruno and Pocahontas and Mulan and Raya and all, a bunch of characters you don't see very often. Fun little moment there. And now I'm headed to Pirates of the Caribbean, my favorite ride in the park. Pirates of the Caribbean, the wonderful classic iconic dark boat ride. A full family can enjoy this one as you go plunder and pillage and rifle and loot and drink up me Artie Joho with a ruckus band of buccaneers aboard the Seven Seas, including everyone's favorite pirate, Captain Jack Sparrow. Now, Pirates of the Caribbean is a tier two attraction only on Multipass, tier one in my heart. But it's a good choice of an initial tier two attraction just because it is very popular and the wait times do vary on this one. Sometimes it's low, like right now where it's 10 minutes and sometimes it's 45 minutes or an hour. So you don't really know what to expect, but it's a great popular attraction and a good use of a tier two Multipass. Hello. Thank you. And now that we're tapped in here, that does mean we can in fact book a another lightning lane. I got my eye on Spas Mountain because it's the next tier one attraction to try and reserve. Let's see. Gonna go ahead and lock that in. Oh, I can get it from like five minutes from now. I'm gonna have to move that. Now, one thing I wanted to highlight, I'm not sure if you noticed because I blur it, but when you click select, it asks you to select who else in your party is going, which answers the question of, does this work the same for one person as multiple people? And yes, it does. Because I didn't have to select my party till after I clicked the ride, it's showing me the, the next available times for anyone. And if you had multiple people in your party, it would have pre-selected anyone else you'd been booking with, or you could add other people. I'm not traveling with anyone today, so I just select myself. All right, I'm going to move. Let's see, it's showing me the rest of my day. I've got Tron at like three. So I'm going to try and line up Space Mountain to be around the same time as Tron. This is one thing I do like about this new system as compared to Genie Plus. At Genie Plus, you could only book the next available time, but here you can select a time that works a little bit better with your schedule, pending availability. So I've selected three o'clock uh, for Boss Mountain. Gonna confirm that, and we're good to go. Pirates of the Caribbean, check. Again, my favorite ride in Walt Disney World. Only posted 10 minute wait. I waited like two minutes to get on with the lightning lane. So very, very quick. And while I was in the queue after I booked that next lightning lane for Space Mountain, I got the push notification that my group for Tiana's Bayou Adventure had been called back. So let's take a pin out of Tiana's, which I put in earlier, because we got to talk about virtual queue now. Currently, there are two attractions across Walt Disney World that do not have a standby queue. They only have a virtual queue and a lightning lane. They are Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which is a multi-pass lightning lane, and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which is a fancy ride. Note that Tron Light Cycle Run until very recently was also running as a virtual queue, but on September 9th, it became a standby queue, but it's still a fancy ride. Virtual queues for these attractions are free, and they're available to attempt to join twice a day. Once at 7 a.m. from anywhere and once at 1 p.m. when you have to have tapped into that park. I should note that while most tickets no longer require a park reservation, if you do have a ticket like an annual pass that requires park reservations on certain days, you do need to have a park reservation to the park you want to go to to book that 7 a.m. spot. Starting an hour before those virtual queues open, so at 6 a.m. and at noon, the system will generate the virtual queue for those attractions and allow you to check your party. This allows you to make sure that anybody that you want to go with you on the ride is checked, anybody that doesn't want to go on the ride, maybe they don't meet the height requirement, is unchecked. To access virtual queue from the main My Disney Experience page, you're going to click the hamburger menu down on the side. You're going to scroll down to virtual queue, 
and then they're gonna show you your different virtual queues. This is where you're gonna confirm your party. So I did that this morning for Tiana's Bayou Adventure around 6.55 a.m. You do not have to get up an hour in advance, but if you are linking with a bunch of people, I do recommend checking a little bit earlier just so you can make sure everybody's all linked up and you're ready to go. You're then gonna count down until exactly 7 a.m. When that button at the bottom that says refresh, you're gonna refresh it and then click Jordan Virtual Queue and then hope that it populates with the boarding group. As a pro tip, use a different phone or a different device to use a world clock to be counting down and click that refresh button right at 6.59.59 or 12.59.59 and then click that same spot again for Join Virtual Queue. Just keep tapping on it. And then again, hopefully it will provide you with a boarding group for that attraction. Now a boarding group is gonna be a number and it's gonna call you back when it's your group's time to ride. This morning, I got number 23 for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Throughout the day, you can monitor the virtual queue status of that ride, both on the virtual queue tab that you booked it on in the My Disney Experience app, as well as the boards around the park. Then when it is your group's turn to ride the attraction, they will send you a push notification. You can again check those boards or you can check on the virtual queue screen to see when you've been called back. I will note that it's very nice that on these attraction gives you an estimated time of when you should get called back. Again, it's an estimate that could change very easily if the ride is moving people quicker or slower if there's a downtime or something like that, but it does help you plan just a little bit if you look at the estimated return callback time. But when you do get called back, it's gonna give you a window to board the attraction. For Tiana's Bayou Adventure, it is one hour. Then have one hour to go back and tap into the virtual queue, which is the standby queue at the attraction. I should note that virtual queue does not guarantee you an expedited wait. That's a lightning lane. It just allows you access into the standby queue. And again, there is no other way to ride these attractions other than virtual queue or lightning lane. It's very important you arrive on time for your virtual queue return time. I see them turn away people all the time, especially at Tiana's. So make sure you are there. Do not assume that just because your group got called back that you can let that window expire because you, at that point, most likely missed your chance to ride. I do not want that to happen, so let's hop on over to the bayou right now. Now, I will say my least favorite thing about virtual queue is the fact that you have no control over what time you're gonna ride the attraction, which makes it hard if you're trying to plan out your day or if you're gonna park hop and things like that. It's very convenient that I happen to be literally right next door at Pirates of the Caribbean when I got called back, but I don't personally love the fact that you don't get any say in when you can ride the ride. Additionally, I have other lightning lanes booked around the same time. So now I'm a little worried that depending how long it takes to get through the Tiana's virtual queue line and through the long attraction, I don't know if I'm gonna make say my haunted mansion, which expires in about 50 minutes. So for now, I'm gonna keep it, hoping I get through Tiana's in time. But if it looks like I'm not going to, I'm gonna try and modify haunted mansion for a little bit later. Now, one thing I will note about Tiana's Bayou Adventures, much like the predecessor, it has a lot of downtimes. So it was actually not open for most of the morning and now it's open again, obviously, but the logs aren't moving and I see lots of folks sitting on them. I'm hoping it's temporary, but because of this, I'm really not expecting this line to move very quickly. And honestly, I'll just be grateful if I get to ride it. Just as I feared, the attraction is down and they're dumping the queue. I didn't even get to scan in when I noticed they were dumping the queue. And I looked at my app and it had changed from when it would said now boarding my group. It said, sorry, we can't accommodate you right now. We'll call you later. The attraction's down. And I confirmed with the cast member that I didn't need to do anything. I didn't need to scan anything that when the attraction's back up, they will call my group again. I hope that happens while I'm here today. But at least I got to explain virtual queue at this point. Um, this is really the bummer of this attraction. It's a delightful, wonderful attraction. Everybody wants to ride it because it's brand new but it has a lot of downtime. I'm lucky enough to have ridden it, but it is a, it really, my heart goes out to anyone that wants to ride it and this happens throughout their trip. Um, but for now, we, we carry on. I've got a uh, Haunted Mansion and then Thunder, which does mean I gotta do a little zigzag, but I've got them both locked in for right now. So I don't wanna mess with that and we're off. All right, made it over to Haunted Mansion. Probably the best choice for a tier two attraction you can make on your initial booking. It's very popular opening day attraction, family ride through the manor where you can see those 999 happy haunts. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Haunted Mansion is another tier two on the chart, tier one in my heart. Now it's really not busy today. It's actually the day of a Halloween party, which just so happened to be the day I could film this with a very busy, hectic current schedule. Just as a general, tip for maximizing your stay outside of multi-pass the days that there's parties at magic kingdom so halloween parties and christmas parties and the park closes at six to non-party guests they're very uncrowded because people understandably don't want to come to magic kingdom on a day that they aren't going to get fireworks or a full day's experience but if you've been here before if you've got park hopper 
It is a great day to come to Magic Kingdom because the lines are relatively low. You could do a lot of things without lightning lanes, or it's even easier to use multi-pass here. But I do think this park's pretty easy to use multi-pass at in general, which I talked about in the resort video as well. Betrays an aura of foreboding, almost as though you sense a disquieting metamorphosis. We will continue our tour in just a minute. <laughs> Haunted Mansion check, posted 20 minute wait, waited three to get inside the stretch room. And now I am headed back into Frontierland to do Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Again, I know this is a little zigzaggy since I was just over here, but with the exception of Tiana's, which is still down, it, once I'm done with Big Thunder, I'll have checked off everything I wanna do on this half of the park before I move in and do more of Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. So I'd rather just do it now while I have it booked than try and guess when I'll be back over here. Now, after doing Haunted Mansion, I could book another lightning lane. I don't think I'm going to though, because I've got a pretty nice stack set up for the rest of the day. Everything else on my list that I wanted to accomplish, I won't need a lightning lane for. But let's take a look at the availability. Big Thunder 25 minute wait. And since I already have it booked, I can't see if there, what times the availability is, but because it says book for another guest, that does tell me that there is more availability. Buzz 20 minute wait, and I could book it for like right now. Mansion, 20 minute wait, I could book it for 3.30. It's about 12.50 right now for reference. Winnie the Pooh is out for the day. Peter Pan is out for the day. Pirates I could book for 1.10. Tiana's is still down and not surprising, out for the day. Everything else is kind of those filler rides, so it's unsurprising that you could book soon lightning lane return times for those as well. And again, 12.50 is a little early probably for Pooh and Peter Pan to be out, but remember the park closes at six. So I'm not surprised that those are gone. Those are two that do run out relatively quickly. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, always a delightful attraction. It's the wildest ride in the wilderness. 40 inch height requirement, that's four zero. It's a delightful coaster. Another icon, another classic. I mean, you gotta do the wildest ride in the wilderness when you're at Magic Kingdom, right? Big Thunder Mountain Railroad posted 25 minutes, waited four minutes in the Lightning Lane. Again, this is such a good example of why you should come on these not party days. I know I'm doing multi-pass today, but there's not a ton of long lines in the park, so you can get a lot done without multi-pass, and it makes multi-pass, which I think is pretty easy to use this park, even easier to use. The reason I say it's pretty easy to use in this park, and I've talked about this before, but because there are so many attractions and there's not such a discrepancy like at Epcot where there's like, Two rides on multi-pass, everybody wants Frozen and Remy, and then everything else is kind of like, okay. There are a lot of equally awesome rides in Magic Kingdom, which distributes out what people are booking, thus making it easier to book. Not to mention the fact that there's just more in quantity rides on Lightning Lane here. So it's just easier to use because um, you can distribute people easier between Thunder and Space and Mansion and Peter Pan and Pirates and Buzz, etc. Again, the main exception here is Tiana's. Now, before we move on, I, I don't know like to be that Disney adult that like is mad about changes. I am a Disney adult, but I, I tend to embrace change in the parks. But I gotta say, it hit me really hard riding Big Thunder. The fact that the Rivers of America is going away. If you didn't hear at D23 recently, they announced that this is gonna be leveled, filled in for a Cars themed attraction, not Radiator Springs like in Disney California Adventure, but like wilderness themed 
cars experience with cars. And I'm going to move past the fact that I don't understand how cars fit in 1800s frontier mining towns. But I, I to do this, they've got to get rid of Tom Sawyer Island, which I'm not going to pretend like I like Tom Sawyer Island. In fact, I can't believe it still exists when there's, or at least hasn't been rebranded considering there's a bunch of stuff that says engine on it. I'm not going to pretend that I care that Tom Sawyer Island's going. I'm not even going to pretend like I ride the riverboat a lot, which is also leaving. But the riverboat is kind of iconic in its look and its sound and its kinetic energy in the park. But more than the riverboat, this river is very iconic with the landscape of the park. And when you ride things like Big Thunder, you crest along the river and you look out and you see the river. And I feel like I'm most upset about the loss of the river. But, you know, we'll see what happens. It, it's not breaking ground for a while at this point, so we'll see. Things could very well change, but they, they, that was the plan and the concept art, so I'm, I'm curious as to your thoughts. But while you mull that over, we are headed to Fantasyland. We actually have an hour before my Seven Doors Mine Train Lightning Lane, which is my next Lightning Lane, so I'm going to do what I always recommend, which is filler stuff. I'm going to get a snack, maybe see a show. We'll figure out something fun to do in Fantasyland when we get there. Let's head there now. Made it into Fantasyland, New Fantasyland to be exact, where we are going to grab our snack over at Gaston's Tavern. They somewhat recently underwent a menu change and removed one of my favorite sleeper hit sandwiches at the Magic Kingdom, but they replaced it with a savory tart. And I've heard it's pretty good, so we're going to give it a try and see if this is a worthy replacement to the pretzel ham and gruyere sandwich. All right, here it is, the ham and gruyere tart. It's much bigger than I expected and it comes with chips. It is still considered a quick service meal on the dining plan if you're using that. It's not a great use of meal on the dining plan though because you would get a drink with it, but it's only like $9 and you want to buy more expensive things if you're using the dining plan, but it's pretty big for $9 and I'm excited to try it. Definitely shareable if you're considering this a snack. Yeah, that's delicious. Look at this flaky, crispy, like croissant-like crust, very buttery. And then you've got a lot of this Gruyere cheese on it, which is kind of nutty, but then it also has a lot of this gooey bechamel sauce, like pocketed on top, plus the salty ham. This is a delicious snack or light lunch. You know, I'm sad about the loss of the pretzel bread, but pretty good. No arguments here, I'll definitely eat this again. Also, I can't come in here without also recommending the giant cinnamon roll ask for extra icing, um, but that's what they're known for, as well as the Lefubre, the non-alcoholic drink. But this is delightful, and I think maybe like a little hidden gem for a savory snack in the park. After a truly scrumptious little bite there at Gaston's Tavern, still got some time before my mind train lightning lane, and Tiana's Bayou Adventure is still down. So since it looks like I may not be crossing, go on down the bayou off my checklist I wrote today, well, I'm gonna go under the sea. It's kind of the same thing. It's a different water ride, not real water, different princess, but you know, there's singing animals in both of them. So that's the same. Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid does have lightning lane, but it also has a five minute queue right now. So I'm just gonna walk through standby. This is a very cute attraction. It's a slow Omni Mover ride, classic Disney dark ride through the Little Mermaid story. And it's a great filler ride because it often doesn't have a super long line, but it's also pretty easy to snag on multi-pass if it is a busier day. And I really do think this one's worth a ride despite my fear of Ursula. Oh, that's why I want to organize our collection after that big storm. Let me tell you of an evil sea witch trick Ariel's boys away from her. Wait a minute. Under the Sea Journey, The Little Mermaid check. Now, as a friendly reminder, Seven Doors Mine Train is a fancy ride, meaning it's an individual cost to skip the line here. 
Also note that it does appear they are out of Lightning Lanes for Seven Doors Mine Train for the rest of the day. It seems like there's still some for Tron, but when I went to go modify it, which is an addition to this system, I do like that you can now modify fancy rides. You can change the time, you can change the attraction, you can even change the day, all pending availability. But when I went to check if there was any availability to modify, it said there were none left for the day. So this one is pretty popular which makes sense. It is one of the most popular rides in the park right now. It's got a 45 minute wait, which is very short for this attraction. Again, I am lucking out as far as the wait times go, uh, but that is one of the longest queues in the park right now. And normally it's usually like 70 or 80. Maybe 45 minute Thank you. Seven Doors Mine Train has a 38 inch height requirement and it is a cute family coaster and part dark ride with the Seven Doors Through the Mine. It's very cute and I always say I like it because the cars not only go forward like roller coaster cars, but they actually swing like this like mine cars. And it's just a delightful attraction every time I ride it. Seven Doors Mine Train, check. Such a cute attraction. I love the dark ride portion of it. Only waited about four minutes with the fancy ride versus the standby lane. Also, that attraction is one of my favorite hidden Mickeys. I think one of the best hidden Mickeys. If you are on the right-hand side, just before you crest the hill after the mine at the doors, on the last wooden plank column before you exit out of the mine, there's a Mickey carved into it and he's holding a pick, like he's one of the miners as well. Very, very cute. Uh, friendly reminder that I have a whole secret series where I point out little details like that about different attractions in all four parks. But such a cute ride, very glad I did that. And now we're headed to Tomorrowland. Also, if you're not planning on purchasing the fancy ride for Mine Train, or if you're a non-resort guest and it sells out by the time you get to book them, I definitely recommend doing this one in the evening time. Always remember that you can get in line for an attraction up until the minute before the park closes. As long as you're in line, even if it has an hour long wait, you can wait and you can ride it. And it's a really cool attraction at night. Also, if you don't care about them or you've already seen them, it's very fun during fireworks and there's usually not too long of a line then as well. I don't recommend rope dropping it as a non-resort guest because the resort guests are gonna get the jump on you since they have the early uh, access as resort guests and most people head to a mine train. And even when I did a rope drop video here, it had like an hour long line in that early park admission. So unless you're gonna get here really, really early for that as a resort guest, I do not recommend rope dropping mine train. All right, we have made it into Tomorrowland. Now, I did go ahead and book myself a lightning lane at Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. That was on my list of things to do today, but I didn't book it earlier just because I didn't know what time I'd be over here. I had a rough guesstimate since I have Tron and Space already booked, but since it's a quiet day and since there's been ample availability at Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, I made an exception to the always have free booked rule and decided to just wait until I knew I was closer to the ride which again, is not the plan I recommend. I recommend always having three and modifying as needed, but I've said it a thousand times already in this video, please don't make this a drinking game. It's not very crowded today. <laughs> Tapped in at Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. This is a family ride, no height requirement that's gonna put you inside a battle with my main man Buzz Lightyear against the evil Emperor Zerg. You're gonna use your laser blaster to shoot the targets and to stop Zerg from getting all the batteries because he's too lazy to go to Costco. No one has told Zerg that you can actually have Costco delivered. He doesn't know what Instacart is, so he's trying to steal all the batteries and you have to help. Okay, 
Well, as Lightyear Space Ranger Spin Check posted 15, waited one minute to get on that bad boy. Always a fun attraction. Now, my next Lightning Lanes are Space Mountain and Tron Light Cycle Run. They're not for about 30 minutes, so normally I would take a spin on the People Mover or see Carousel of Progress, but I'm seeing some gross looking sky with some potential inclement weather coming in, and I don't want that to ruin my chance to ride Tron. So I decided to see if I could modify Tron to an earlier time, just on the off chance there were some available now, and there were. Also, Seven Doors Mine Train came back and had some availability, and I checked the other parks, and there's availability for all the fancy rides right now. That includes Rise, Flight of Passage, and Guardians all had availability for today. So it's not just Magic Kingdom that's slow right now. For reference, it is the end of August. I'm assuming school has started going back. So this could be a good time to visit, but this weekend is Labor Day, which means it will be busier. Ever since COVID, crowds have been so weird. There's weeks that I feel like are going to be really crowded, and then they're not as crowded. And then there's weeks that are really crowded that never historically were. I also feel like at this point... People are waiting to come until 2025 so they can go to Epic Universe. But if you want to see using the system on busier days, definitely check out those initial videos that I did, the 101 and the Resort Guest video with this system because they were much busier than today. And the other parks have been much busier than today too. Regardless, same principles work no matter what. And here we have found ourselves at Tron Light Cycle Run. This is the tallest height requirement in the park with 48 inches. And friendly reminder that Tron recently transitioned to a virtual queue to a standby queue as well as being a fancy ride. This one is a direct import from Shanghai Disneyland, which we recently did videos on if you want to check those out. And it is a very unique seat roller coaster where you are going to enter the grid. If you're using fancy rides and you're going to be here all day, I highly recommend booking this one at night because this outdoor part, that initial zero to 60 launch into this grid when it's all lit up is Amazing and 10 times better at night. Users, prepare to be digitized into the world of Tron. Tron Light Cycle Run, check. It really is a fun coaster. I just wish it was longer. It's like 70 seconds long and that is not enough, especially when you pay $20 to ride it, but it is really fun. I understand why people enjoy it so much. Now, a fun thing I just learned and we're all gonna learn together now. I was looking at the tip board to see if Tiana's Bayou Adventure was open. It's not, but neither are any of the outdoor attractions. And I assume that's cause it's thunder. When every single outdoor attraction is closed, that's weather related. But Tron is still like, happily shooting people off into the grid and I asked the cast members and they're like no because of the way it's covered we don't actually have to close it in clean weather which was news to me I assumed because it was outdoors um, it would close if it was like pouring and thundering and really heavy winds but apparently not from the cast members so uh, my bad for assuming you know what that does and uh, now we all know that Tron doesn't close for weather so that's cool you know what else doesn't close for weather Space Mountain which is where we're headed next Space Mountain another classic Magic Kingdom attraction. It's that rocket ship roller coaster through the dark, opened up in 1975. It's a dazzling guest ever set. Very popular ride. Tier one attraction, definitely a good use of a lightning lane. It has a 44, that's four, four inch height requirement right now. And it's a little crickety and rickety, but it is one of my all time faves. Space Mountain check, posted 25 minute wait, waited four minutes, which is just the walk up the long, long 
but nostalgic music playing. Cue a lovely attraction of must-do for me, and where we are going to end this video. I've hit pretty much all the heavy hitters throughout Magic Kingdom, and of course, I had to stop and get myself a pumpkin creme brulee cold brew right here at the Joffrey's Revive. Mm. Y'all know my go-to through most of the year is the Shaky Jamaica cold brew, but during this most wonderful season of all, the fall, I go for the pumpkin creme brulee cold brew, which is not listed on the menu, but it is part of other drinks. Like if you look at the Game Changer, it's this plus espresso and a bunch of other stuff. They have it at all the Joffrey's carts around Walt Disney World right now. Just ask for the pumpkin cold brew, black, or you could add cream or whatever if you want. Um, but it is, it is just divine. The best pumpkin coffee I've ever had. In five hours here at Magic Kingdom, I was able to do nine attractions, including most of the most popular ones. Unfortunately, Tiana's Bayou Adventure is still down. It was only up for like 20 minutes all day long. I hope it comes back up but with the weather right now. It's not definitely not coming up before that, but I hope it does come back up for the guests that are here today and the party guests that are coming tonight. In addition to those nine attractions, I also got to see that delightful cavalcade, try a new very delicious snack and luxuriate at Gaston's for a bit, and of course, pick up a coffee, the most important step of any theme park day. Now, the mathematician has kindly sent over the multi-pass math for us today. I did six multi-pass attractions in the lightning lane, so that doesn't count Tron, that doesn't count Mine Train, and it does not count Under the Sea Journey, The Little Mermaid, Ulstum, because I did not use the lightning lane there. But for those six attractions that I did do on multi-pass in the lightning lane, which again, were Peter Pan's Flight, Pirates of the Caribbean, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Haunted Mansion, Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger Spin, A and Space Mountain, all very good, primo, top tier, great uses of lightning lane attractions, that averages out to just over $4 per ride when you take the total cost of multi-pass I paid today, which again was $25. Again, not a very busy day today at all. The posted wait times of those six multi-pass attractions was 135 minutes, and I waited a total of 16. Total time saved almost two hours, one hour and 58.8 minutes to be exact. I basically spent no time waiting in line today. All of that part time for the most part today was traveling around the park, actually riding the rides, enjoying snacks, etc. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I got a little nervous with how low the wait times were, thinking maybe I should have done this at a different park today. But I just looked at all of the parks and I've literally never seen this happen. There's not a single wait in Walt Disney World right now that's over an hour. The longest waits are 55 minutes at Flight of Passage and Rise of the Resistance. That's bonkers town. So I just really lucked out on a really low wait day, which unfortunately I don't have a way for you to guarantee it's going to be a low wait day. But do keep in mind that going to Magic Kingdom again on a non-party day can get you some lower waits. And hopefully, regardless, the information in this video, the tips, the tricks, how to functionally use the system in the park was still very helpful. All the same principles would still apply. If it was busier, it just may be a little bit further out that you're booking things and then you fill in more things. Or maybe you have to fiddle faddle a little bit, which is refreshing that modify screen to see if a new time or new attraction pops up. One thing that definitely didn't matter that it wasn't busy today is Tiana is Bayou Adventure. Unfortunately, it was down for the vast majority of the day and it was not available for me as a non-resort guest. I never saw it pop back up as an option, which I'm not surprised by with it being down so often. But I also, since the system has been rolled out in its truest form, since this has started, I've never personally been able to get it as a non-resort guest or hopping into Magic Kingdom. Other people have DM'd me and told me they've done it with the power of the fiddle faddle and I love hearing that. But just know as a non-resort guest, expect not to be able to get Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Expect to have to use that virtual queue to ride it. And if you happen to be able to book it, then that is just an extra wonderful, magical surprise. Like I said earlier, I think Magic Kingdom is actually a pretty easy park to use the system in. I think there are so many attractions, both on Lightning Lane, Multipass, and as good filler options, that it's relatively easy to book something. And even if it's a little bit out, you do a couple filler things, and then you book something else, and so on and so forth. Of course, there's heavy hitters like Tiana's Bayou Adventure, Peter Pan's Flight, Haunted Mansion, Jungle Cruise, when that's available, those are gonna run out as well as your fancy rides. But I think this is a park that you need to use the system in most days. And also it's gonna be much easier than the other park you need to use the system in, which is Hollywood Studio. And right now as a friendly reminder, if you don't use the system at all, but you've pre-purchased it and then you get to the park and there are low waits like today, you can change it to another day. Unfortunately, you can't cancel it and get refunded, but you could change it to another day. So if you didn't have the system booked already for tomorrow or another day on your trip, you could do that if you don't want to use the system. But the hard part with being able to book in advance is that you probably want to book it. You probably want to lock in those lightning lanes. And then if you get here and there's not long waits, you're like, well, I spent the money. 
But still, even with the weights being this low, I still saved a lot of time in line. And for me personally, if I'm coming to Magic Kingdom as someone who does not have any interest in rope dropping, if I'm here to ride a bunch of rides, I'm gonna most likely use multi-pass to make that happen. Well, friends, that is a wrap on this non-resort guest multi-pass series. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Definitely let me know your questions down in the comments. Go check out the other three parks to see what those look like and let us know if there's other multi-pass content you'd like to see. Brand new still, it's gonna keep evolving and changing and we will definitely do more videos if there are any major updates or a little bit down the line to see how things are going. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to us on social media. Come hang out with the Man Fam and Discord. Until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been so magical.